Hey everyone, welcome back to another XO Zeros episode. So sorry for earlier about the stream. It was cut short. Had a power outage. I you know I can't do anything about it. So here we are, guys. Um I've seen a lot of questions, particularly in Facebook. Um where do we start? What nations? What heroes do we start with? What you know? where do we start so that's the basic question because again we had a reset the game had did or had or did a reset but now um i figure it out on where to start and it's with particularly your top three heroes per um per nation particularly with your general your lieutenant then your captain or your sergeant so again these are just my opinion guys because if you want to start w somewhere, might as well start with the nation itself. Because, again, the game is still centered on buffs, as you can see here. Um, buffs are still there. And the, bu the buffs are of the Blue Fate Core, your core memory is still going to be ridiculous. And also your signature force. So, again, the theme is build around your nation and... To answer the question on which you know which uh, best gold fate core to pull, where uh, what uh, blue fate core to pull the best one from these tickets, black fate core, you're gonna have to follow the formula from your nation. So if it's going to be a general, then pick a general. If it's a black fate core, pick a black fate core from that nation. If it's a blue fate core, pick it from that nation. So again, this guide will basically more or less guide you. This guide will guide you to where you want to start from, because there's no other way to start, you know, from from you know from from this game. But again, through nation nation buffs, particularly which nation. So let's start off with, uh, you know. The top five. I have a top five for the nations that I would want to recommend. By the way, guys, um, key to the game is going to be um, your nation first. Second will be your gear, your artifact, and the last would be your fate core. So those are the four. So, more or less, I'll be doing a lot more research on those. What are the best to use um, to apply to a specific nation? Um, again, there's a lot out there. Um, but we'll start with the best nation. So, to start off, I'm going to start with North Von Frosty, starting with Shufrak. And, and you might be asking, Warden, what? Why are you recommending North One Frosty? Okay, let's go over all of the skills of the generals, the lieutenant, and the captain of each nation so that you would understand. And there's a theme to it. So for um, Shufrak in here, you have... Um, he has um, debuffs. Obviously, there are attacks. And uh, for his skills, um, he grants heal over time to himself. And he has immunity to self. Immunity is different from damage immunity, guys. Immunity is going to be to be immunity from debuffs. Okay, so don't don't you confuse yourself on the two. And also this one. Now he has provoke. So the big daddy has provoke already, even only for the back row. But at least he has provoke, because again, um, this is going to be a good combo with this with his provoke so target attack by self has debuff afflicts target with bind for eight turns so again if you have somebody who could give debuffs then this dude is going to be you know to make your day or it's going to make your enemy's day a little bit more you know um shitty than it is okay so shufraken next is going to be let's go over her daughter valentina valentina is not that bad as well so Purchase one buff from target attack by self. So she has a debuff. Uh, automatic debuff from, from her passive. Then she deals damage. And she has stun for three turns. And she also has silence. Again, a lot of debuffs. Again, you can really combo this with Shufraken. Especially if you have somebody who can give debuffs on an AoE level. My god, this is going to be a good, really, really good nation to move forward. 
Next is going to be Ramji. Ramji is has anxiety. So also increases his attack speed for twen for tw by 20 for 8 turns when an enemy heals. So he's still anti-heal. Deals damage. Uh, afflict target nullify heal for six, uh, for 6 turns. Again, he has debuffs and, um, and decreased health regeneration as well. So again, the theme for Northfront Frosty is if you want this nation, if you want a nation that is really built on giving debuffs this is your answer and they're good at it they're going to be better once they have their fate course but again as base as they are they are um one of my top teams the, th the top teams by the way are not really ranked they're just the top five okay next would be greenland so as usual battery is still you know it's still relevant even without tranquil You'll see what I mean. So for her passive uh, increase her own attack by 50% of own attack for two turns at the start of Ally's turn besides self. Okay. So this is going to be um, good for her. Next is going to, she's going to have a nullify buff as well. <laughs> F uh, damage to all enemies and uh, Niflheim is going to be... She's going to have debuffs, guys. That is why I like um, this version of Bathory as well. So, But she also packs a punch, I'm sure. Okay. So that is it for Bathory. The main, the main reason why I am actually liking um, Greenland is actually because of Rera and the next hero after her so again she is still good increase attack by three every time another hero's turn besides self ends and s2 she has silence even if for one then this one the last one is going to be similar to her previous incarnation of the skill is extra damage if the enemy has more mana so again very very good um battery for debuffs she is actually you're going to be your damage dealer here and for ulum ulum actually kind of it's going to be good because he has shared health now so shared health for ulum then you have um increased defense to all allies and <laughs> stun damage to all enemies and 60% chance to afflict stun for five turns. So again, the, you can't go wrong with you know a lot of versatility for battery. So if you want more versatility in your lineup with with defense, debuffs, attack, you go with Greenland. Okay. Next on our list is going to be Shadowbane. I think one of my favorites is actually Shadowbane. To be honest with you guys, I just, just want to share um, my enthusiasm with uh, Luna. And her bunch of misfits. So as you can see, Luna has a heal over time. Or 5% targets maximum health. And um, she has uh, heals all allies 70%. Resurrects for 5 turns. And uh, she has deals with, and stun for 4 turns. So heals, resurrects, stuns, you name it. I think this faction or this nation is going to be, you know, uh, more on control. So more on control, more on tempo. Next is going to be Melissa. Melissa, I like her kit as well. So Melissa heals for 50% of own health when ally dies. One time per battle. It's okay because they have resurrect. Then increase all allies by 11% of own attack. She has a buff and grants a bar equal to 12% of own maximum health for all allies. Again, a buff, two buffs, barrier, and attack. Then her third is going to be deals damage to all enemies and decrease hit. Again, the versatility of Melissa's kit is actually very good. And the last is going to be Garland. Garland for Shadowbane is very very good increase attack by five percent upon receiving damage so he's it this stacks up then this one is piercing damage to all enemies 
Then this one is going to be lifesteal. There you go, guys. So for me, I think I'll be developing Shadow Bane moving forward. There they are great. Um, hands down. For me. For me. So so we have three so far. North One Frosty, Greenland, Esto uh Shadow Bane. And the next is one of my pets and favorites, Estoris. Janai. Um sad to say skills water down, but again, her kit is still good. And uh, she has immunity, so immunity to to the debuffs. Then she has poison as well, and her last skill is going to be good at the sixty percent chance of afflicting silence for five turns. This is for all enemies, guys. So sixty percent. Imagine that. So if you have five, more or less, at least three will be silent. At least three. Out of the AOE. And this is really, really good. So again, another faction where this uh, or nation that, you know, gives debuffs or relies heavily on giving debuffs. Because um, as you can see, for Jin, <coughs> he has more on survivability with dodge than with stealth here. And he also has decreased hit by 35%, which is actually insane. So, um, this um, nation will really depend on Jinai so much. And also, the last one with Shell. Shell's kit is actually very good. So, grants one random buff to ally for five turns upon basic attacking. So, one per round. So, one, one out of the attack plus 20 attack plus 20 hit or plus 20 crit damage. So, this is going to be her, her passive. Increase attack of an ally, so she still provides buffs. And she also grants a barrier. So while you know while giving the buffs, she also provides a buff or buffs. So deal 63% damage to all enemies. 45% chance to decrease hit by 11%. And this is also to all enemies again. So uh, for, at 45%, at least I'm saying two or three. Will be affected which is which is actually very good so that is why they are on the top five and the last team to be on the top five teams would be of course carrie and saint west because carrie has immortality for four turns upon receiving damage beyond current health so she's immortal for four turns again hard to kill her Next is going to be, she's going to have a decreased health regeneration to all enemies. Then you have here Nullify Heal. So again, very good kit, um, full of debuffs and survivability. Next is going to be um, Nemeris. As for Nemeris, um, he is built for attack, so increase on attack when granting buff to an ally besides self. So his S1 is actually a buff, surprisingly. Decrease attack of all allies by 6. Decrease hit of all allies by 10% for 6 turns. And um, deals 525 damage to one enemy. Dissipates upon defeating an enemy. So again, he is going to be a damage dealer for Saint West. And... The last will be John Donk. I thought John Donk's kit would be bad, but it's good. Increased defense for front row ally heroes by 10%. Next is going to be another Grand Simuity to sell for 8 turns. Increase on defense by 33 for 8 turns. So he has defense. Then he has provoke, which complements his increased defense. But um, And this is a damage to all enemies. So again, very good. Again, so that is that that rounds out our top five um, nations, but I have two bonus nations for you to consider because I think they have potential moving forward. It's just that my preference for the top five is actually just my own opinion. But again, here are my um, honorable mentions for nations that you might want to consider, and it's going to be Wonderland because they are very, they are. A specialist bunch. So triggers double team when an ally acts and uh, attacks an enemy. 
And this one is burn for all enemies. And this one is going to be solely for damage. So Wonderland is here because, again, they're a specialist bunch. So next is going to be Kruger. Kruger is... So receives additional defense and has stun. Then has provoke for the backline. And let's um, look at hinder. Hinder is. I thought also that his his uh, his skills are going to be bad, but I think they're good. Sleep for three turns, and it's for all enemies, guys. And um, deals uh, to one enemy and chance to decrease hit by forty five percent, eighty percent chance. So again, they're a specialist bunch for Wonderland. And the last nation that I think is going to be good, um, part of my honorable mentions, is going to be Vagabond. Schmid for Grants Run Run Up to Self. So he is a self-buffing dude. Um, then he has Lifesteal, uh, damage to all enemies, and damage as well and as dissipate while sewa continues to impress me actually even if she was nerfed so grants heal over time for self and okay false blood after receiving damage it's nice and for her s1 heals all allies by 70 percent of own uh, of own health one d and cleanses one debuff from from one ally then the next one is going to be Grants Resurrect when allied with the highest attack for 9 turns. So again, very good kit. The only gripe that I have with, uh, with Vagabond is going to be Awakened Zeon. So counter, which is good. 50% chance upon receiving damage. This one has a burn effect for one enemy. And this one is just burst damage. So again, those are my top, basically top seven. Top seven um, nations that you should consider when you are going to start this game now. Or whether you're a beginner, whether you're, you know, pissed off and but you want to give it a try. Whether, you know, as long as you're starting this game today, this is going to be your guide. Build based on nation um build based on what is your preference for each nation and i'm sure the rest will follow i'm not saying that the other nations are that bad particularly you have wasted red you have lenombe you have brun you have pedas i'm not saying they're bad i'm just saying that there are better starting trios than what they have they might have good other heroes, but again, um, this game is usually based on the gold fate cores, and usually the black fate cores are mostly your supports. So again, if you want to base anything, it's going to be on the top three per nation. The rest will actually, you know, um, will actually figure out as the game progresses, or you know as time progresses but again based on the top three per nation again these are just my opinions and the top seven guys feel free to choose what uh, what nation are you going to use moving forward for me personally i'm gonna go with um shadow bane it it really interests me a lot um one also that i might consider is going to be north one frosty um, I like the synergy uh, between the three and the other one. They're really a lot good. So um, I'm not sure if I'm going with stories at this point. Not sure yet. Not sure yet. But I might still develop the you know the top five nations that I mentioned. But again, top for me would be North One Frosty. Would be Shadowbane. Um, gonna veer away from Greenland. Um, my last one would be either Stories or Saint West. I'm not sure. I'll surprise you guys. But again, those are my top picks for the nations. And play the game, guys. 
um, this is a new game. We have a new beginning, and hopefully you. I'm actually optimistic about it. I'm just trying to be more optimistic because, again, although a lot of players were, you know, a lot of older players, uh, actually like me, I, I started playing this during launch, that were affected. But again, let's give this a chance because the redeeming factor for this game would be the artifacts and the gear. I'm sure. Um, Fate Course, Fate Course will have just a passive, additional passive, but not so much. But again, um, it's going to be your artifacts, guys. So, again, thank you guys for staying this long in this video. I hope you, you know, you you found what you're looking for in terms of where to start, uh, which black Fate Core to choose, gold, blue and orange from the selector because again base it on the nations that you are picking okay so thank you guys um hope you subscribe um i'll be putting out more content on exos heroes uh based on the new all new exos heroes and um please also don't forget to click that bell icon so you don't miss anything um, on my channel and uh, put a like to this video thank you guys stay safe take care this is the Warden, and I'm out of here.